Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Live It Up. This is the show where we explore and discuss how to take your life to that next level and beyond. We cover health, wealth, relationships, and how to create a life you absolutely love. I'm your host and coach, Fletcher Ellingson. Amy is out today, and so we're going to visit with an organization whose mission is to connect people, communities, and the natural world. Pretty cool, huh? I kind of stumbled onto this organization by accident. My wife, Amy, and I decided to take a weekend getaway to Leavenworth. She planned the entire weekend, which was really cool. And we stayed at the Enzian Inn downtown in Leavenworth. And I gotta say, that is a great place to stay. We had such an enjoyable time. They've got an outside pool and hot tub, an indoor lap pool and hot tub, which I loved. They've even got a racquetball court in uh, in the hotel and a basketball court. We also got to use their 18 hole mini golf course right across the street, which was beautiful and and so well laid out. There were so many people out there enjoying themselves. It was fun to see all the families. And then in the evening, they had a gentleman down in their lobby playing piano by the fire while guests kind of just lounged around and listened. And upstairs, they have all sorts of board games and welcoming couches and tables to hang out and play the games. It's really unique. Then in the morning, we went uh, to the breakfast that was included and oh my gosh, what an incredible uh, delicious breakfast they offered. There were homemade pastries, made to, made to order omelets, and so much more. Plus, the dining room has this breathtaking view of the surrounding mountains, and the, and the windows are huge, and they curve up into the ceiling, so you feel like you're right under these, this be- these beautiful mountains of, uh, of Leavenworth. And one final thing, they had someone up on the balcony playing one of those long 12 or 15 foot alpenhorns as to gently wake up the town. It was so enjoyable. I highly recommend staying there. No, this isn't an ad for them. I just had such a great time and I wanted to share it. Okay, but how does this tie in with the Wenatchee River Institute? Well, Amy and I are fans of meditation and visualization. So she had looked online and found a place that offered a place to gather and meditate with other like-minded people. And so we went there and got the opportunity to hang out with cool folks and meditate and listen to people share. It was beautiful. And the place in which it was housed was the Wenatchee River Institute. So after the meeting, I looked around and was astounded at all these offerings um, of this institute. And what a blessing this place was to the, the, the community at large. Now remember, I define blessing as the lifting up or elevating of another person or people. If you're a blessing, it would result in another person or people feeling empowered or feeling that their load or burden had been lightened somehow. They would feel noticed. They'd feel cared for. You know, it's so easy to focus on what's not going right in our world. It's easy to hear the news and believe that the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And if we only focus on what's broken or not working, it can get pretty discouraging, which is why I love to run across people who are doing something positive in the world. When I meet people who are are contributing to their community and making a difference, I feel inspired, I feel good. It gives me hope, which is why I want you to meet them too. So stick around as as we talk with Carolyn Griffin Buchert and Rachel Bishop, who help run the Wenatchee River Institute. They'll tell us what the Institute offers, the programs, and how you can get involved if you're so moved. Now, I usually answer an email before we get to our, our guest interviews, but today we have a lot to cover with our guests, so we're going to skip it for today. But before we get to that, I want to remind you that if you do have questions that you would like us to answer on or off the air, you can email them directly to me at Fletcher at FletcherEllingson.com. If you feel stuck in an area of your life, whether it's financially or in your health or in your relationships, get in action. Reach out to us because you don't have to suffer. There are answers and there are solutions and ways to get unstuck and move forward powerfully. Now, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with Carolyn and Rachel, so stay with us. Hey everybody, welcome back to Live It Up. We are talking to today with a couple of people from the Wenatchee River Institute. We have to, uh, to my right, Carolyn Griffin Buchert. Um, she is the executive director. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. And we also have Rachel Bishop. All right, I'm just getting these names right. Rachel Bishop, and she is the community education lead for the um, Institute as well. So let's jump into the questions. Okay, okay? perfect. Um, if someone were to ask, what's the Wenatchee River Institute? 
How would you answer that? You know, Fletcher, the Wenatchee River Institute is kind of a hidden gem that yeah. not a whole lot of people know about. And you're a great example. It sounds like you just discovered it yourself. Yeah. And there are people in Wenatchee and even in Leavenworth who aren't really familiar with where we are and what we do. So we are an outdoor learning center. We're located right in downtown Leavenworth, about three blocks from Starbucks. Mm -hmm. But we are located on nine acres of fields, forests, and direct access to the Wenatchee River. Oh, wow, I didn't know it was that many acres. It's huge. Yeah. We have uh, three buildings. We have a 100-year-old river house, which is where you did your meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a green-built building, the barn, which is environmentally very friendly and a very efficient building and is our classroom space. And then we have another building called the E-Lorraine House. So we have three buildings, nine acres, with walking access to the river, and we are an outdoor classroom. So we are beautifully situated in terms of just the, we are in nature, but very, very close to downtown. Mm -hmm. And what we offer is adult <clears throat> and youth education, and we offer it in a variety of ways. Cool, all right. So yeah, I was, I didn't realize it was nine acres, but it, it, you're right, it is hidden gym. It's like right on the river, then there's a neighborhood. Yes. And then there's downtown. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's, that's pretty cool. Um, so what kind of programs do you offer? I understand there are youth and adult programs, like you just said. So can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, I think Rachel's yeah, going to answer. I can start. Great. So for our youth program specifically, we have something called the Field Days, which is when teachers bring their students to us. Mm -hmm. And they'll come, they'll bring the whole classroom, and we'll split up into different groups um, with ed educators from WRI. And they'll spend a half day or a full day with us learning all outside and what they're learning is dependent upon the season mm -hmm. and we also have um, programs where we go to schools who can't afford to come to us so it's pretty pricey to come via bus to Wenatchee River Institute so if they can't come to us we go to them and that's oh, our cool. traveling naturalist program and Carolyn can talk a little bit more about that um, so give me an example where do I assume like the Leavenworth schools come to uh, yeah. other districts come and make use of this yes yeah, so we work uh, actually last year was our first year working with all kindergartners through sec or sixth grade in Leavenworth so that's the Cascade School District and then we are also working with Vail Elementary in Kashmir work with third and fourth grade from there. Mm -hmm. And then a variety of Wenatchee schools come to us. Oh, great. Yeah. And then Efreda also is coming. Okay. So we're, we actually serve a pretty wide range of schools. And the, the unique thing about our field day program is we are really using our nine acres as our classroom. Mm -hmm. So students come up and they actually experience nature up hand close and personal. So they actually get in the river and look for a macro. Oh, wow. uh, invertebrates. Uh, they do bird watching in the trees and the fields of our campus. Uh, they're looking for bugs and snakes under rocks. Mm -hmm. So they're actually the curriculum is really hands-on and because we're working with classrooms our curriculum is really developed to be aligned with the national science standards. Mm -hmm. So we're up there having fun. The kids are having a great time and what they don't realize is in the process they're learning a whole lot as yeah. well. Yeah, hands-on, right? Ha yes, absolutely hands-on. Is this, uh, is it closed into winter or, or are there winter programs as well for the kids? Yeah, there are winter programs. Oh, and okay. we have snowshoes that we use with students if there's snow on the ground and mm -hmm. we focus on snow science and yeah, we're still outside, right? That's cool. part of our ecosystem that we live in. Um, so who are the, in, who are the instructors that are, are teaching this? Are, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have staff that are educators for our youth programs. I'm one of them, and we have mm -hmm. a few others. And some of our programs, we also have a variety of volunteers who help us. So those might be uh, specifically like station rotation pr um, programs where a volunteer is at a station and they are teaching the kids that station and they'll move on. And then uh, we have programs where uh, groups of students are with the educator for the whole time they're with us. It's just dependent on how long they're with us and what programs we're teaching. Got it. Yeah. And, and how long have you guys been interacting with the schools um, like this? Over 10 years. Over 10 years. Yeah, oh, and okay. the interesting thing, our relationship with the Cascade School District, those third and fourth and fifth grade classrooms, they come to the Wenatchee River Institute 
four times a year. Oh wow! So they come through multiple seasons. Really? Yeah. So they we have this very very strong connection with the uh, Cascade School District, mm -hmm. um, and so the students are actually being able to as third graders can plant potatoes in our community garden. And then they come back as fourth graders and they can harvest them and then make something with those mm -hmm. potatoes. I love so it. So it's really, it's a pretty continuous curriculum that we, we uh, are interacting with students enough that staff can actually develop relationships with those students. Mm -hmm. And it becomes more, um, yeah, it's just a closer knit curriculum structure. That's cool, so you've got, actually got a, a, a vegetable garden out there. We, yeah. we do, yes, we do. We are part of our program, which you might not have seen, is we do have a community garden, which is on the tail end of our nine acres of property, and it's a we have raised beds that we um, rent to the community oh, wow. uh, for the season. So I think we have 33 raised beds, something like that. Wow. The garden is actually uh, was created by c the community really wanting a community garden. It not only is a space for people to grow things in their own bed, it's actually also filled with art. Hmm. So there are sculptures, there are murals, um, there is seating there, there's a, a little community library. Mm -hmm. It's really quite a wow. nice little spot. And that is actually just one of five gardens that we have on the property. We have three sort of highly cultivated gardens with flowers, and then we have a pond garden, we have a native plant garden, and then we have our community garden that we rent out. Wow. So there's kind of, there's, there maybe are things you didn't see while you were there. Yeah, 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 I did <laughs> but, not see all of that. But yeah. I'm really interested in that last bit of what, about the garden because um, a couple years ago I joined a community garden up in Chelan. Mm -hmm. And it's like, a, I think it's half acre or maybe three quarters of an acre. And that has been such a learning experience for me personally. I mean, we, yep. we do everything, right? We grow it and harvest it and maintain it and in between, put it to bed in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, but the abundance of food that we grow on that small plot yeah. is staggering yeah. mm -hmm. and tastes delicious. And I've just learned a lot about it and the connection you feel just by working in that environment with, you know, with the earth is, is remarkable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and I think gift. the thing I really like about our community garden is because we have the community come together each with a small raised bed plot. It really is, creates a sense of community Yes. and we have garden volunteers who've put on workshops, brought in experts. So it's, and we actually had a potluck there, uh, which was a, a nice way to pull the community together around food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, who doesn't like that? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so this sounds like a lot of, uh, of programming. How is it, how is this institute funded? Well, you know, we actually have hardly scratched yeah. the surface of programming. <laughs> yeah. We gave you about two pieces. So let's give us let's give you the rest of the pieces okay. before we talk about money. All right. Well, we're, let's take a quick break, okay. and uh, we'll come back and hear more about the programming. <laughs> okay. All right. Stay with us. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Live It Up. We're talking uh, today with Carolyn and Rachel, and we're talking and getting information about the Wenatchee River Institute. So we left off and we were talking a little bit about the programming mm -hmm. and we just scratched the surface. So <laughs> we got all sorts of cool stuff. Tell us a little bit uh, more about what some of the programming offers. Yeah, so to extend on what we were just talking about with youth programs, we also have uh, school break and summer break camps. Mm, okay. um, yeah, and those are on a variety of topics offered all throughout the year just based on when there are breaks in the school calendar. Mm -hmm. And then we also have uh, our traveling planetarium, which is this very large dome that kids can get in and it's dark inside and it's it looks like they're looking up at the solar system, really? like all the stars in the sky. It's like oh, a cool. dark night looking up at the stars. And the kids are so excited to see, you know, a sky full of stars, even though it's fake. You know, it, it still gives you that experience of yeah. being outside in a completely dark night looking at the stars. And the educators who are running it, you know, can move you throughout the night and you can look specifically at the moon or look specifically at the sun or different planets. You yeah. can travel to those planets. It's very cool. And that we can set up in our barn or we can go to schools, which we have done to, um, you know, do it in a, in a big auditorium and have as many kids as we can going in 
through the and through really the dome. our focus is trying to not only have opportunities <clears throat> on our campus but also bring our opportunities out to the community as well cool yeah. good good um, so tell us about some of the adult programming yeah so we have a variety of types of adult programs and you know, we have workshops we have uh, art classes we have field trips we have programs where we go to breweries in the valley uh, we have speaker series um, and some of those cost money some of those are free we have guided walks in different seasons and those are open to anybody anybody who wants to come mm -hmm. and they generally end up being adult focused programs but some of them are open to families as well so adults can come with their kids yeah yeah so some of the adult uh, activities that we've had just to give your um, viewers an idea mm -hmm. is um, we've had basket weaving class uh, Rachel did a field trip on beavers oh, and cool. they set a live trap for beavers list some other things you've done Rachel. yeah we have had wildlife tracking classes in the winter so tracking in the snow mm -hmm. and then also just this last September we had another one where we were tracking in the sand we actually tracked a great horned owl walking on the ground really? which was very cool it's another way of just having a deeper understanding of the place you're in you know yeah. you may not see those animals but they have been there right uh, we've also had different other art classes so well an, it's kind of an art making our own shampoo and conditioner bars mm -hmm. so the whole idea of that is to learn how to reduce the amount of plastic you're using in your life and the amount of plastic waste you have in your life so learning how to make a bar and that was with the bubblery soap company which is in Leavenworth okay um, yeah and each person went home with a shampoo and conditioner bar that they could make I love or it. that they made yeah, to yeah. use yeah that's cool yeah. Uh, great well um, I would I want to hear a story like uh, maybe some of your guests who you just have a cool story about a success or a neat uh, experience can you yes. share something yeah so first of all I think WRI has many 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 success stories um, but one that I thought of specifically this morning was in the winter we offer free guided snowshoe walks so we have snowshoes that folks can borrow and use and we meet all together. It's on Thursdays. So we're going to do it and again this and year. I just want to pause there and say that this is a free. This is free. Yes. So yes. If, if you've ever thought about, like, it'd be cool to get out on snowshoes and in the winter, here's where you can do it. Yeah, and my story kind of has to go, goes along those lines, right? There's a lot of folks in the classes last year came up to me and said, you know, I've never thought that I would try snowshoeing. It looks really challenging or it's really expensive. I can't buy the snowshoes, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't want to go out by myself. But to have this free program where we do have the snowshoes, they're not going on their own. They're with a group. They're with somebody who knows what they're doing, guiding them along the trail. Um, it empowered people to try yeah. something new, uh, especially in the winter where I think that can cause a, or create a a barrier for people Absolutely. to go outside and yep. connect with the natural world it's a little scarier mm -hmm. um, but yeah a lot a lot of people felt empowered to come and then had this whole new skill that they could use later on in their life it was I great. love it yeah. and then yeah. Rachel is also then guiding people in terms of hey look at this tree and hey look at this bird mm -hmm. so it's not only that experience of snowshoeing but it's actually connecting with nature right you're expanding yeah. their you're helping them expand their awareness yeah. of their mm -hmm. surroundings right yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love that because life is the sum of our awareness yeah. so when we expand our awareness we expand our life yeah. right um, so who is the Institute open to who who is this who can come here and partake in these services so anybody can come at any time for almost anything <laughs> our grounds are open for picnicking so if you just want really? to come and use our picnic tables please do wow. um, our classes uh, some are free some have a fee associated we work with schools but we also have summer camps that people can sign up for those are fee based and one of the programs that we didn't mention which um, I think is important for your viewers to know about is we actually rent out our space as well oh, and right. we're just starting to open ourselves up for uh, weddings and we've had a couple of weddings on our campus and it's a beautiful setting mm -hmm. so we had an outdoor wedding this summer which was really fabulous with a spectacular view mm -hmm. nice yeah nice. so but really the trick for people who might be intrigued about what they've heard about our programming is really to go on our uh, website um, Rachel puts together adult classes 
And in fact, um, often those glasses are filled up very, very quickly. Mm. So Rachel's suggestion is get on our Facebook page because Facebook is the first place people go. Classes fill really fast. Um, so while we're on that topic, what is the domain name, and can you share with our viewers the how they what Facebook where yeah, they go? Yeah, yeah. Our Facebook name is Wenatchee River Institute at Barn Beach Reserve. Quite a long name, <laughs> but you, it's the whole thing. <laughs> and then our our website is WenatcheeRiverInstitute.com. Dot org. Oh, excuse me. Yep. Dot, dot org. org. Dot okay. org. <laughs> All right. Good. Good. <laughs> so. Um, what are, what are some upcoming events that we have? We have a few minutes left. What are some upcoming events? Yeah, uh, so today is um, the third evening of our speaker series, our science speaker series. So there's one more tonight and then one more at the end of November. And you said a science speaker. Yes, it's science speaker series. So that is happening at Milepost 111 in Kashmir. And this year's topic is wildlife. Um, and then in December, we have a winter wreath class, and this class is full now, but it might be offered again next year. Mm -hmm. um, creating a wreath not necessarily for the Christmas season, but just in general for winter decoration. Got it. Yeah, and then, you know, in January, we have a couple other programs, and registration is not open for those yet, but we are going to be partnering with North Central Regional Libraries to offer an adult STEM night in our red barn oh cool and they're going to bring uh and some for those virtual reality for those of that don't know what stem is yeah yeah science technology engineering and math um it's the focus and uh, so hands-on science for adults yes the kind of things maybe you see your kids doing and yeah. you think i'd kind of like to do that yeah. too that's totally me <laughs> that is so cool <laughs> i love that you guys are offering that yeah and then those free snowshoes if we have snow in town which i hope we do will happen again in january and this year we're going to be doing moonlight snowshoe walks so as close as we can to the full moon, getting mm -hmm. people outside on snowshoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Then we have a fun. ski movie coming up. Yes. Um, and what was the other? Oh, Wolverine. Yes. A talk on Wolverines at our barn. We have evening uh, events in our barn. We have sort of a small gathering space. And we bring in uh, movies, speakers, and topics. Well, you guys are have a really interesting uh, institute. You probably have all sorts of interesting people. So if somebody wanted to get involved, uh, do you need volunteers? How, tell me about that. We do. We, we use a lot of volunteers. We use volunteers in our youth education programs. Mm -hmm. um, and we use volunteers. We're looking for vol volunteers all the time for office help, stuffing envelopes. Mm -hmm. We put on events. We could use volunteers in that way. And we have nine acres and three buildings, so <laughs> facilities help is always mm. appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, but most people like to engage with the education side because that's where you get to work with youth, and we're always looking for people who have a passion for working with youth. Got it. I love it. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we're looking for a place to get involved. Contact them at the website? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. We have a volunteer uh, form on our website. All right. Volunteers needed, and it's going to be fun. So <laughs> It will. Contact We're fun folks. folk. All right. <laughs> um, in a, in a, just a couple of words, we just have a few seconds. How is this all funded? Uh, so we are a nonprofit, so we don't make a profit, <laughs> uh, just to be clear. <laughs> Um, we are funded by probably 30% uh, is by donations mm -hmm. and grants. So we are really dependent on our community to support us. Uh, we are also funded by people paying registration fees for mm -hmm. summer camps and some of our classes and some of our schools coming. Um, and then we are fortunate to get some uh, ongoing operating support from the Icicle Fund. Oh, so, right yep. Yeah, so we have sort of three uh, major pots where, but we are highly, highly dependent on people giving to us, and mm -hmm. particularly as we head into the end of the year, the giving season, we are really asking for people to support us. Cool. Well, it sounds like uh, a wonderful opportunity to support mm -hmm. uh, a really worthwhile institute. So. Yeah. Um, we have to wrap up, so thank you so much for being here. Um, for I'm having. delighted that you guys have this and are making it available to the to the public. Thanks for all that you do. Yep, yeah, thanks thank for you. stumbling into us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, now it's time to get out there. It's time to be a source of kindness, be a source of contribution. You do have something to offer this world, and I believe in you. <laughs>